When I think about scaling businesses, there are a few people that come right to mind. And my next guest is somebody you're gonna to wanna to hear from. Welcome to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Berg, speaker, author, sales trainer, website reviewer, here to help you in your wedding and event business sell more, profit more, and have more fun doing it. Enjoy this episode. Welcome to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I'm Alan Berg with a very special guest and friend with me, Jeffrey Miller from Jeffrey Miller Catering in Philadelphia. Hey, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. We are here at the Cater Source Conference, which is very appropriate because uh, I don't think we met at Cater Source, but uh, you you have, what is it, 16 venues now? 16 venues. And, 16 and venues. counting. And counting. <laughs> so this is for my series that I'm calling Scaling. Yeah. And it's scaling businesses uh, up and down. You obviously didn't start with 16 venues. No, start with one. How long ago? 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And how long did you have just one? Probably 10 years. Okay. Yeah. So 10 years, just doing your thing. Um, w did you get a second or did you get like a whole bunch then? Well, the funny thing was we got approached by the uh, GM of uh, a racket club in Philadelphia. And he said to me, he says, Jeff, you know, we're thinking it would be good to have some uh, a caterer in here, do some weddings. I'm like, sure, I'd be interested. So we spoke to him for a while. He says, well, I got to talk to the board. And I said, like, okay, talk to the board. He comes back, he says, well, we're not sure the board's going to approve this. I'm not sure who's going to, what kind of people you're going to have. I'm like, okay, that's fine. So five years later, he comes back and says, well, Jeff, the board's approved it. I'm like, okay, let's do it. F five so years five later. later. <laughs> and I said, you know, you realize you lost about uh, $500,000 <laughs> that you could have had, but you know, what can I say? It was his call, <laughs> the board's call. Uh, the board's call. Yeah. Yeah. Better late than never, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> that's what I said. So, so this group, th they had five venues. Yeah. What were they doing before? Uh, well, they, were, they weren't having any weddings. I mean, they had a beautiful ballroom and they used the club during the week. The members would have lunch in the dining room and then the weekends it sat empty. And it's actually, our model is kind of like an Airbnb. Okay. So we partner with different venues who often are nonprofits and they've got beautiful space, parking lots, bathrooms, right. um, but they don't use the space on weekends usually. So that's kind of how it worked. Got it, got it. So you don't own any of those venues? Don't own them at all. No. And what I do know about your venues, because we've worked together, mm -hmm. is you have some just beautiful not, I call them non-traditional spaces. Yeah. They're all different. They're mm -hmm. all unique from the Mercer Museum mm -hmm. to the Lake House in to the Arboretum. They're, they're just really, really cool. Uh, is that what you look for when you're looking to expand? Absolutely, yeah. I don't really want to build a catering hall because okay. you build the newest catering hall and then five years later, it's not so new and 10 years later, it's not really new at all and 15 years later, it's kind of dated and 20 years later, it's like, ugh. And so then what do you have? Whereas if you get an old mansion, mm -hmm. I mean, as it gets older, it gets more appealing because there's less and less old properties. Right. Or if you get an arboretum, you know, they're not building new arboretums. Uh, so that's always appealed to me. Right, and, and again, your spaces are all different, all beautiful photo ops. Okay, so you went from one to six. Yeah. And then? Well, no, they, they, had, they had one. They, they had, had one, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, um, you know, once we had a couple, people started hearing about us, mostly in the nonprofit world. Mm -hmm. So we got a call from the Philadelphia Society for the Preservation of Landmarks. That's a mouthful. Yeah. And they had a property, Anthony Wayne's house, which mm -hmm. was his, Matt Anthony Wayne, that was his home. So they had a uh, tent property. So we approached them, or they approached us and said, we heard you're doing this at the Rat Club and Aldi. And so we spoke and we said, yeah, we'd love to work with you. And so people have been approaching you? Pretty much, yeah. Maybe two-thirds approaching us at this point. Okay. I don't think now we're looking for places. They more or less find us. They're finding you. Okay, so you're at 16 and you said for now. For now. So, but again, you're not actively seeking properties. Uh, I'm looking at properties when people okay. approach us. So okay. we probably look at, I don't know, one or two a month. We okay. get inquiries. I mean, some we don't even look at, but mm, we're, yeah, we're looking. So let's talk about the growth here because I talk to people about right-sizing the business. Mm. Uh, it, we, we don't know that 16 is the right size, right? right? It, it, it could be 60, it could be 12, right? Yeah, <laughs> it could for be sure. That. So as you went, you went from one to two. Yeah. When you went from one to two, did anything really change? Not really. Okay. I mean, the funny thing is you're like, well, how big is too big? I mean, I remember 40 years ago when I first started, I was working out of my two bedroom apartment in West Philly. And uh, we were doing just work at Penn, University of Pennsylvania, that's all we did. And I spoke to the chef at the time. He said, well, we got a call from the president, and we have an event that night, and the provost wants to do a dinner. I'm like, that's two in the same night. <laughs> he says, well, Jeff, you know, you do one, and I'll do the other. I'm like, oh, I don't, sure, why not? <laughs> so I did one, he did the other. I was like, it worked. Okay. 
And, and then I realized at that point, like, I don't have to be at every party. I used to feel like I had to staff every party. Mm. And I'd be up till midnight the night before every wedding. I got to call the waiters to make sure they work. Otherwise, they're not going to come in. And then another guy says, Jeff, I think I can do this. Like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, all right, try it. Mm. And I haven't staffed a party in 37 years. <laughs> so I, I think, you know, f it bu it's fun to build. Right. And it's fun to create a venue from scratch and build it into something exciting. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the fun part. And uh, it's sometimes it's hard to let go, but that's the only way y you can grow is to say, you know what, I can do this pretty well, and maybe someone could do it 90%. Maybe they'll do it 110% better than me, but I can't do it myself if I'm going to try to grow. And as to whether 16 is enough, it's like, I don't know. I mean, we had a lot of problems. We had two parties, two venues. We had a lot of problems. We had five. We have a lot of problems now. And I'm sure if we get another 10 venues, we'll have a lot of problems then, too. <laughs> so I, I can't say what's the right number. But if I find a property that's interesting and cool, I will go after it. But you also have some economies of scale as you got even bigger because of some centralization, right? Your accounting yeah. didn't go 16 times up. Exactly, and, and yeah. I mean, like we've that. got a great CFO now. We've got a great executive chef. We've got a great marketing director. And they do marketing, whether it's 5 or 10 or 15. Right. Uh, we just hired a, a first HR person, which I never thought we needed. And now I'm like, how do we ever do without her? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, in terms of the marketing, you market each property as itself, not as yeah. Jeffrey Miller Catering. Yeah, because um, I think we do a great job, but I think these are un properties that are unique and gorgeous and beautiful, and people want to have a wedding in Aldi Mansion. Right. And if they find that there's a caterer that they're comfortable with, who's good, and they've got good reviews, and they're happy with, and they think the food's great, then that's, that's a bonus. Mm -hmm. But I kind of feel like, um, you know, that they go for our venue. Right, and I actually spoke about this earlier today. as like, sell them, if you're the venue, sell them on choosing you, and then you work on the menu. Then you work on the other things. There. Don't yeah. put the cart before the horse. Yeah. No. We, you know, we, we sell them the venue, and then we are like, we do great work, and, and we'll do a tasting in three or four months. You'll get a chance to do your tasting, and then you can pick the menu out. But okay. you do uh, individual or group tastings? We do both. Okay. Um, so each y 16 venues, you have a person assigned to each one. Some venues are small enough that one person can handle two. Okay. And some venues are big enough that they require an assistant. Now, you say small enough mean in volume. In volume, yeah. Like if a venue is doing 30 weddings, we can give that to a person who's already got 40. Does the venue determine what your, your volume is? Do they tell you you can only do X number, or is that you? Mm, mostly supply and demand. I mean, okay. how, well, how many people want to use that venue? And since our venues are niches, they're not catering halls doing, you know, weddings every Friday, Saturday night. They might only do 40 weddings a year, which is fine. Maybe just the Saturdays and... Right. May, June, September, October. And, and for the organization, most of these are nonprofits. You know, they're land trusts, they're conservation groups. They're happy to have an extra $100,000. Right, exactly. Uh, so y um, your salespeople in each venue, they're selling as if they are Aldi Mansion. They're selling yes. as if they are there, even though they work for you. Right. A and then I guess they get uh, whatever your arrangement is with them, the venue fees mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff there. Um, so again, this scaling is what we're talking about here. There are economies of scale when you get bigger, but there, you know, small problems can also become bigger problems. Yeah. Um, biggest problem is always people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. I, uh, when I was just starting out 40 years ago, I was at Penn and I was uh, thinking, Aramark was based in Philadelphia, and I thought to myself, well, if I'm going to be a caterer, I should try to talk to like a guy who knows a lot. So I said, I'm going to send a letter to William Fishman, who was the founder of Aramark. <laughs> I don't know what I was th why I was thinking he would talk to me, right. but he did. I mean, I was an alum, and he was an alum as well, and he was in Philly, and I sent him a letter explaining what I was doing. He said, sure, and he was gracious enough to see me. I spent like 20, 30 minutes with him. I said to him, I said, you know, Mr. Fishman, what's, what's, what's the key to your success? He looks at me and says, Jeff, he says, I am the best paid uh, HR director in the country. I'm like, really? How is that? He says, I just try to get the best people I can and pay them as much as I can afford to pay them and try to keep them happy. I was like, that's it? He says, that's it. I was like, hmm. There you go. And now I realize we're still not quite as big as Aramark, but uh, that is the issue. I mean, I just got to get the best people I can and try to keep them happy. Right. And if they're happy, uh, people happy, money second. Yeah. Because uh, my son found this out. He was in a job making really good money, but he really didn't feel satisfaction. Yeah. And I've heard that this is a millennial thing, but I don't think it's a millennial thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's a people thing. Yeah. You have to show up every day, and you, it's not like you're getting paid every day. Here you go, right? Here's right, your money, right. like in the old days, right? You got paid at the end of the day. Right. So you don't really feel that the same way because it's electronic deposited into yeah. your account and all that stuff. But you have to like the people you work with. Yeah. You have to like the job that you're doing. And it's the connection to the results. 
and my son in the job that he's in now, he said, I know who I'm helping. Mm -hmm. He's in, in banking. And before he's like, you know, I know I'm helping my group, which helps the bank, which helps the stockholders. Yeah. Who am I really helping? Right, right? Right. But now he's like, you know what, I know who our customers are. Right. And every time someone refinances a student loan or whatever, he said, I feel that because I refinance my student loan. I'm saving money and I can feel mm -hmm. that. The great thing about weddings and events is you get to see. Yeah. You, know, you see the people yeah. having a great time. The reviews, yeah. and you guys get phenomenal reviews. Um, actually, uh, 4 o'clock today, you guys won't see that, but I'm, I'm presenting here and I'm pulling up some of your venues because I'm talking about show the results and you have some of your venues have tents, right, mm -hmm. outside, mm -hmm. beautiful, mm -hmm. clear top tents. And you want to show somebody your tent, don't show me an empty tent. No, don't show me an empty tent. Right, and, and on your website is a, a beautiful, I pulled a couple of the beautiful pictures and the people are in the tent and you're not going, oh, they're in a tent. You're looking, how much fun are they having? Exactly. And then I think it was Anthony Wayne, beautiful historic building. Mm -hmm. You want to show people the historic building, don't show me the empty room. Right, we're not selling real estate, right. we're selling an experience. Right, and now <laughs> look at this couple in this beautiful historic room yeah. and I get to see the fireplace and the details and all that kind of stuff there. So what advice would you give to people who are scaling? Some people who are listening have one location of whatever their business. They're not all caterers or venues. Some people already have multiple. What, yeah. would you, what, what, what did you know that now that you didn't know then? Well, I would say that you should only scale if you want to scale. I mean, there are people who are very process oriented, very much doing the same thing. They want to get things down to a science. And there's some very successful caterers. Some of our colleagues, they have, you know, one, one in particular, they've got two venues. They love it. I don't need more venues. I'm making great money. They've figured out how to run it like a science. And if that's what they like, God bless them. Right. Uh, so you have to want to have a little of a restlessness and you have to want to grow and you have to want to be excited by doing something new and creating something new. And if you are, then I would say go for it. Um, I mean, you got to find, if it's a venue, you got to, it's all about location. It's location, the location, location is part of it in terms of where it is and what it is, right. but it, it, the catering is secondary, as you said, it's the location. So you have to walk into a property and say, wow. If the couple walking doesn't say, wow, that's uh, going to be a problem. Right. You can put as much, you know, you know up lighting as you want, <laughs> as much white furniture as you want, but <laughs> at the end of the day, if they're not going to say, wow, because of the property, then that's a problem. And it's actually before that, because if they don't get wowed by your website, by your advertising yeah. and marketing, another thing I'm going to show this afternoon, I went to, it was either the Not Our Wedding Wire, I went to catering in mm -hmm. just random market, pictures of food, pictures of food, pictures of food. I'm <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you selling? You're not a supermarket. Right. What, what, what are you selling? You're right. Show me the experience. And then one of them is actually, um, it's like a three-wheeled, almost like a golf carty kind of thing, but it was turned into a mobile bar. Hmm. But there's nobody standing there getting a drink, right? No right? It could be a f equipment furniture. Right, I mean, you can ad. see that if you yeah. look in and it's tough to even see, it's yeah. like, what do you, what do you, it, the picture's this big, right? Well, they need well, Allen Berg to consult with them. Well, you know, I, I say this all the time. I mean, I was vice president of sales at the Knot and I tried to get across to people. The first impression is that thumbnail. Yeah. And then they look at the rest of the pictures there. You don't need 80 pictures if you have 20 Drop dead yeah. gorgeous. I, I mean, better to have five good ones than twenty mediocre ones. Absolutely. And, and, and um, when you talk about the venue, the photo ops, every venue either has or can create photo opportunities. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, then they can't picture. It's like staging a home. Why do you stage a home? Right? Right. People know what a sofa looks like. Right. Right. But show me where it would go. Show me where the chairs would be. Mm -hmm. Show me this kind of stuff. Uh, we sold the house and we had nice furniture, but we had taken it out and we had it staged. And my wife, who should have been a decorator, she's looking going, huh. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You know, I never would have <laughs> done it that way. But I mean, they did some, you know, things like they put glass coffee tables so mm -hmm. it looked more roomy, right? They mm -hmm. did some certain things like, oh, well, we wouldn't use the glass table because we had kids, but it does show better, doesn't it, right? Yeah, yeah. So you need to show them the possibilities yeah, of yeah. what it could be. But, you know, it, interesting that the, the, the other caterer you said that's got two venues and, and they're happy. Don't scale your business because somebody else did. Oh, yeah, exactly. You think you're supposed to. Right. And it, it, you, don't, you could be one and you're happy and that's it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm talking to people who are also scaling their businesses down. And, you know, sometimes you get big, you know, what is it, more money, more problems. Yeah. But so many people I've spoken to who've gotten bigger get to a point that said, you know what, I got to here and I was making more money, making more money. And then I'm not making any more money. I'm not making any more money. I'm not making right, any more money. Right, right. I'm doing more. I, I'm, I'm passing money from somebody to other people, but I'm not making any more money. And that's what you have to worry. A client of mine was a rental company, is a rental company. And when I started working with them, I said, so what are we trying to achieve? They said, we want to be the biggest rental company in the city. I said, 
let's work on being the most profitable. And if you also happen to be the biggest, great. Mm -hmm. And if not, not. And the funny thing is they ended up buying the biggest competitor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they began the biggest one. But again, bigger problems, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and now the problem that a lot of people are having is staffing and stuff. They're so busy. So they are the biggest. They can't handle and, the work. Right, and they're raising yeah. their prices and they're profitable, but you, know, you can't handle the work. Yeah. So right-sizing your business is saying what's right for me. Mm -hmm. Not what's right from any somebody else, and that whole you know the grass is always greener. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes there, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. So um, I've met your people. I've worked with your people. Your people love working there. They're great people to work with. Um, I remember you know somebody, one of your chefs was like, oh, he's you know he's gluten free, and man, next time I was there, there was stuff I didn't have to say anything, didn't have to ask. It was there. Again, people listening, people yeah. paying attention. Um, what was that bacon bar we had at the one yeah, event? Bacon bar is pretty popular. Everyone loves bacon. <laughs> so, so how did that start? How, who, who came up with the idea of bacon bar? I don't even know. Bar? I think I may have seen it at a leading caterers conference. Okay. Someone else had bacon. I'm like, that's a pretty good idea. Who doesn't love bacon? And you dip it in chocolate or whatever. And, people and it was like five different kinds of bacon. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're going for that. I mentioned to somebody one time, uh, how about a French fry bar? Yeah. And I saw it somewhere. It was like waffle fries, string fries, steak fries, something like that. All the dippings, all the stuff like that. How easy is that? Well, I'll tell you, okay. from a production, french fries are a pain in the ass. Right, they, they get cold. <laughs> they get cold, right. and how do you keep them warm right. without getting them soggy if they're right. not chafers? So right. we've been doing french fries. I'm like, let's not do french fries anymore yeah. as a station. You'd, you'd have to kind of be cooking them right there. You can, them out and, and now you got hot oil with you, kids running around. Yeah, oh, the kids, you wouldn't want to do <laughs> we that. We stopped doing that, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, so there you go. We live and learn. Well, right? you know. Experiential there. So um, I, again, I think uh, you know, people can learn a lot from you know, the concept of, People came to you because you were doing a good job. Hey, could you do what you did for me? Mm -hmm. And don't grow and then try to get the demand. You grow because of the demand. And as I heard in many sessions over here, no is a very good word. Yeah. We're not a good fit for that venue. We're yeah. not a good fit yeah. for that over yeah. there. And, yeah. and you have to be able to say that because you have to live the life. Uh, I remember being in Mexico one time and somebody's like, hey, if you don't want to do the job, just give them a high price. I said, no, if you don't want to do the job, just don't no. do it. <laughs> because you're going you're gonna to be kicking yourself. Why did I take this job? Why did I take this job? You cashed the check already, and you're like, oh, now i got to do this over here. Don't scale just because it's sexy. Scale because there's a reason that you want to do yeah. that. That's what I think. All right, I will put into the show notes uh, links. Uh, what is your website if people wanted to see? Jamcater.com. J-A-M, like Mary, caterer. Caterer. Cater. Cater. Jam caterer. cater. We'll put it in the show notes. Caterer was taken. <laughs> yeah, caterer was taken. So really, jam caterer jam, was taken. Okay. Jam so cater is available. We took it. Jamcater.com. We'll put it into the show notes. Jeffrey Miller. Jeff, thank you so much for My joining pleasure. me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Take care. See you. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. Full transcripts of this and every episode are available on my website at allenberg.com. And if you have any questions about anything in this episode or any of the episodes, or you'd like to make a suggestion for a future topic or a guest for one of my dialogue episodes, you can email me directly at alan at weddingbusinesssolutions.com. Uh, please subscribe to this channel, post a review if your platform allows it, and if you don't get email updates of the latest episodes, as well as upcoming workshops and masterclasses that I have, you can join at connectwithallenberg.com. I look forward to seeing you on a future episode. Thanks.